Spencer. Vince, did you want to make an opening statement? I should say that first. Excuse me. Uh, I, I can say a couple things, Kenny, and then we can we can say to the. Uh, All right. Now we're going to end. We can't. We're, uh, if everybody would just please mute their mics for a moment, we're going to start with uh, some opening statements from Vince. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be brief, and then we'll get to the questions. I think. Um, yeah, you know, one I would say, it, you know, I certainly made myself available to answer questions as as I best can. If it, if it, you know, there's a narrow lane between, you know, the personnel side of this and any questions that may be around on the NCAA allegations, which this is not what this is about. I'm certainly going to have to step away from those questions. I'll let you know, but uh, in between, I'm happy to try to address what I can. Um, as you can imagine, not a not a fun day. This is a uh, a day for Coach Mack, certainly, uh, and certainly one of my worst days here, I can assure you. Um, makes my hair either turn gray or turn loose, one of the two or both. But uh, nonetheless, um, we know we've got the announcement out today. Um, and I think if you want to ask questions around that, uh, feel free to at this point. Okay, now Kent uh, Spencer, we'll go to you to start this off. Yeah, Vince, this is Kent. Were you the one who made this decision or, and if you weren't, did you support the decision? Yeah, I mean, the decision is made collaboratively as something of this magnitude with Neely and myself and certainly some uh, board input, but noting that, uh, that Chris is a direct report of mine, it rests with me. And if you have a question, please drop uh, a note in the chat. We'll go to Shannon Russell. Go to Shannon Russell. Don't don't hear you, Shannon. Shannon, if you're asking, we do not hear you. We'll go with uh, go to Andrew Chernoff for now. Hey Vince, I've got two questions for you. Um, the first. Can you sort of get into what Chris did not follow, I guess, protocol policy wise? And second, how do you fix this perception? Because this is one other thing that has now added to this program. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, one, I'll work backwards. I would say that how do you fix the perception? You deal with things as they come up. And I feel like at least in my four years here, I try to be consistent and representing the values that I felt like I brought to the program. And when you Got to be fearless about doing the right thing and deal with them as they come up. And uh, in this case, I feel like we did that. Um, you're trying to address it right away and certainly, uh, you know, where we are today of the outcome. Um, so I think that's where you you kind of, you try to take credence in the fact that you are doing the right thing and trying to raise the values and the integrity of the program. Even when things don't go well, they're not going to go perfectly. We recognize that. But we've got a history here of some issues and when they're compounding and they cause uh, negative PR uh, to this degree, um, you know, you certainly are going to address it. And I think, re you know, related to how this was handled uh, around the situation, obviously Chris didn't handle it in a way that we would have liked to have seen it handled. Um, you know, obviously the HR part of it, we did a review and, and came out to a point where we feel like there's some lessons learned here for him. Uh, and probably for us too, but um, you know, without getting into too much of the of that, uh, you know, I, I think we're we're comfortable with where we are today. Go to Russ Brown and then to Kent Spencer. Russ, you must be on mute. Russ, we'll come back to you, Kent. Obviously, Vince, there's a, another case that you guys have to deal with, with the IARP um, involving before this administration took over. Was today's decision maybe in, in some kind of hope that they would, that this would kind of soften the blow in, in that case as well? No, this is independent of uh, the NCAA issues. Uh, this is uh, thinking about how we need to uh, operate the program better in a different way. Um, you know, he was... Chris was faced with a, a difficult scenario, as you guys have now heard, but 
we feel like there was the ability to avoid mitigate what happened if we had just followed the pro you know the procedures. Go to Tyler Griever and then Rick Bozich. Hey Vince, you've mentioned it a little, but it's also mentioned in the release about how Chris did not follow university guidelines and, and how we handled this. Uh, can you be more specific in how you or the university would have preferred him going about this situation? Yeah, he was asked to have someone in the in the room with him. I think Chris felt comfortable with his relationship with both Luke and uh, Dino. Uh, felt like it obviously went uh, well enough with Luke. I don't think either were happy when they were being notified that their contracts weren't being renewed. Um, and obviously the second meeting with uh, Dino, I don't think he ever suspected it would go that way, but it did. Rick Bozich. Yeah, hi Vince. Um, listening to the audio, Dino talked to Chris about the, using the, the usage of grad assistance in practice and the recruiting videos. Were you aware of those things being done uh, before this came to light in mid-March? And uh, what was your reaction upon when you did learn it? Yeah, Rick, I can't touch on anything related to a pending NCAA investigation. We'll go to Jerry Ease and then Shannon Russell. Hi, Vince, how are you? Uh, I could be better. I understand. Uh, the question is this, through the last 12 years that we've had been turbulent, how are you sure that first thing, Chris Mack did not know the NCAA rules. Second thing, that you're comfortable with him hiring assistants because we've heard Coach Patino time and time again rehire assistant coaches and we're in the same situation we're in. So here we are again, a 30-year friend, someone that Coach Mack should know well. We should all be surprised and are you leery of his ability to choose assistant coaches? I think I can speak to where we are today. And I think that, um, you know, certainly I've got familiarity with Cahill as he was promoted into the position of assistant and uh, feel really good about him, feel really good about his player relations and recruiting. Uh, Ross, we obviously spent a lot of time talking about Ross and uh, how to vet him to uh, to join the staff and, and why that uh, was a good fit for us. Um, Chris is obviously known as a defensive minded coach and Ross is an offensive minded coach. And I think, uh, you know, based on where Chris went with the decision, both on both the assistants, chemistry was a concern. And I think that we talked about fit and chemistry quite a bit as he filled those two posts. And these two guys have exhibited that with the team. We can see within the players, uh, which makes me uh, feel good about uh, how they're going to step up here, as well as the staff. I can see the chemistry uh, amongst the new guys with the veterans and then certainly with the coaches. Um, it's a different feel and it's a positive one. Thank you, Shannon. Hey Vince, can you hear me? All right. Yes, yes, gotcha. Okay. I had some technical difficulties. Um, so I apologize if you've been asked this, but how did you arrive at six games for this suspension and who will lead the team during those six games? Yeah, I mean it's you know, Shannon, we looked at the way we handle discipline on campus as much as athletics. I mean, we had a lot of time, obviously, to think about this and uh, where we wanted to come out. And there's suspension without pay is, is not uncommon. Um, but if you're thinking about a coach versus a dean, uh, the business school, for example, games matter. If you're going to send a message, games are important to coaches. And uh, we felt like that uh, sent a clear message of, uh, of uh, the importance and of the magnitude of the issue at hand. Um, and then certainly we, we weighed the number of games. Uh, six is a lot of games. Uh, certainly takes us all the way through the Bahamas, but it, it felt like that was the best place to land based upon our uh, conversations. And who will lead the team while Chris is suspended? Yeah, Chris is meeting with his staff now. Certainly didn't get a chance to for me to really talk about that when I met with the team and staff earlier. So I'm going to let uh, let him handle that conversation. Go to Tim Sullivan with a pair of questions. Uh, yeah, Vince, two questions. Uh, first, uh, the timing was kind of interesting uh, that your release came out an hour before Dino Gaudio's sentencing. Uh, can you explain the connection there if there was one? Well, Tim, I think we didn't want to get in the way of the process that was going on related to Dino's sentencing uh, throughout. 
you know, let the authorities take care of their situation without us uh, interfering. So I think the, the timing of the release and the timing of the uh, announcement of the suspension in general or just imposing the, the, the suspension was just that. It was purely just that. Okay, second question. Uh, Chris's contract has uh, language in it uh, that uh, he could be terminated for cause in the event of a level two violation. Uh, is he out of the woods in your view? Uh, based on what you know, or uh, if the NCAA should impose uh, sanctions based on these allegations, would uh, would he be in jeopardy? Yeah, I can't speak to the uh, where the investigation is or what may come of it, but um, all I can confirm is that you're right in the language in the agreement. Okay, thank you. Go to Jerry Eaves. Let me ask it a different way, Vince. Did you all speak about termination today? You, Dr. Benaputi, and the board yesterday when you all met? No, Jerry, I mean, I, I can't speak to that, where we came out. I, I don't want to share the conversation we had leading to today. I think I'm just comfortable talking about where, where we came out. Okay. Any further questions for, uh, here we go, Tyler. Yeah, Vince, just for clarification, uh, on the call to the FBI, was Chris the one who made that? And, and if so, is that a step that you, in hindsight, did not want him to take in all this? No, that uh, it wasn't a step that Chris took. Chris notified us uh, of what occurred that afternoon, and we, we quickly met that, uh, that day to discuss it. So uh, to his credit, he did, he did bring forth what occurred right away. Kent Taylor. Kent, you on mute? Kent, are you there? Kent Taylor? Kent, well, we're Kent, while we're waiting for you, uh, Tim Sullivan. Uh, yeah, Vince, uh, the, Judge Beaton today wondered why this had risen to a federal case. In retrospect, do you think uh, this should have been shared with the prosecutors or could have this have been handled differently? Well, you can certainly speculate how it may be handled or not. I can only speak that this is the way we handled it today. Uh, I didn't hear the judge's comments, so I, I'm not sure what the uh, frame of reference was there. Fair enough. Well, Vince, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Were, were, you, were you aware that Chris was recording the conversations when he was telling the coaches their contracts would not be renewed? And did you play any part in the decision not to renew their contracts? You mentioned you had spoken to him about chemistry on the coaching staff and that's something that's talked about in the call yeah and chris chris and i met the day before um talked about the future of the program where we were going um obviously he talked about um, his desire to go ahead and make some very difficult uh decisions which he had not had to do historically in his career so did i have a role in it i would say yes by, by virtue of that um and ken i forgot the second part of the question there were you aware that he was recording those termination meetings? No, no, I wasn't uh, aware of that. Uh, any further questions? All right, seeing none, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Vince, thanks for your time. Kenny, thank you for being here. We all know that you're going through a lot, and I'm sure everybody on this call appreciates you taking time away from your family. Thank you. Yeah, condolences to you, Kenny.